Welcome to Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. I'm Linda and this is Schooner. And today we will be painting a white or light subject. If you're new to watercolor, you may want to check out my setting up and getting started videos on my YouTube channel, Linda Strickland Art. My goal is to give you just enough information so that you feel confident to paint exuberantly. So grab some brushes and let's get started. Painting a white or light subject in watercolor. My demo today is from my watercoloring cards, Coastal Cousins. It's a five by seven with de the design printed on ink on the watercolor paper. But this technique can be used in any painting situation. So today I'm painting with a limited palette, which I believe gives you a clean, cohesive, finished painting. So the rule in this no rules watercolor video is the white in your painting is the white of the paper. So anything white on your painting is the paper itself. So the way to keep that white is simple. Don't put any paint there, which is harder than it sounds. So my attack on this painting is that for the most drama, I want a very dark background be against the white subject. That's a high contrast value, which is always the most exciting and interesting part of your painting. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take a flat brush, clean water, and I'm gonna paint all of the background behind my subject with water. I'm just putting water on everything that is not the bird and the moon. In my mind, this is the moon and he's, he's in the bayou at night. So I've, I've got it really good and wet, like almost dripping, but I'm not putting any water where I don't want there to be paint. Remember, no paint where you want it to be white. I'm gonna stay off with those feathers for now too. They're kind of small. Now a flat brush, as wide as this is, will cover a large area, lay it down and let it do its job. But it also, if you turn it on its side, you can get right in there and get the small pieces. Okay, I don't know if you can see where this is shiny, that's where the water is. I can see some spots I missed. Okay, now all this does is buys you some more time so that you have time to paint and you don't have to hurry before your edges dry. So here we go. I'm gonna start with the darkest blue and mix up my big juicy petal in a pretty strong pigment. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn this upside down because I want it to run this way away from my bird. It does pretty watercolory stuff because you've already got it wet. So this is a wet in wet technique, which is actually my favorite thing to do in watercolor. I'm gonna go around the moon. The moon may have some color on it later, but for now I'm gonna leave it white. Now, you know, if one blue is good, more blues are better. So I'm gonna use a lighter manganese blue and kind of mix it in with this, just to give me some variations of color happening. And now I gotta get in here if the flat doesn't get in the small areas, get a round brush. Being very careful not to, to um, get that feather on the top of his head. We don't wanna paint that. It's important that that stays white. So you can see that the paint goes where the water is. Another, one of my favorite things to do is just to splatter. Okay. Now, if the, this is the moon and it's reflecting light out onto the water, it would have a, I'm gonna use a, um, this raw sienna color right in here. Now, this is large washes no details, just letting the paint do its most watercolory thing. I've got that big puddle standing there and I don't want it to run on him. So here's a good trick. If I take my brush 
and wipe the excess water off it. This is called a thirsty brush. If I lay it down here, it'll pick up that excess puddle without disturbing the paint or the paper. If you take this and blot on there, it just makes a mess and the paper doesn't look pretty. But if you pick it up with a brush, it doesn't disturb it. That's perfect. All right, so my yellow is kind of out of control. Let's, let's get this figured out. So the reflection, I got the reflection coming off the moon down onto the water. Now I'm gonna let it kind of mingle in with the blue again. Now what goes behind the barn needs to come out the other side. So where that was blue behind his head, it needs to be blue on the other side of his head. It doesn't need to be yellow there because it doesn't make sense. And your viewer wonders what, what's going on back there. I'm gonna let this blue and yellow kind of mingle together as it wants to. Maybe I'll splatter some. It'll kind of take care of itself. All right, here's the tricky part. These little feathers that come off them here, I want some white showing there. So I'm up on the side of my flat brush and I'm just gonna kind of get in there and tickle some spots. It doesn't have to be perfect. That looks kind of cool. All right, coming on around. If you lay this brush down, it'll cover a lot of territory and you can do this pretty quickly. Legs. Okay, now I can adjust, ooh, look how good that happened. See that? That looks good, I'm happy with that. Now I can play around with it as long as it's shiny I don't know if the shiny is shown in the video. As long as it's shiny, you can mess around. Oops, don't do that. I didn't mix my color. Don't do that. Mix it up good on your, make your juicy puddle. As long as the paper is still shiny wet, you can monkey around with the color and play around and add, add more color, take away color, whatever you feel like you need to do. Once it's no longer shiny, you gotta leave it alone. Okay. Um, We're going to, uh, the, I mean, that's a shaggy. All right. The best thing with watercolor is to paint it and then leave it alone. See, I should have left that alone. <laughs> if this is not perfect in how you want it, we're gonna let this dry and then we can change and tweak it after it's dry and make changes. The best advice I could give you is to leave it alone. So we're gonna stop right here and let this dry. Okay, my painting is now dry. Um, you can let them dry naturally, which is always good. That's probably the best choice. But if you're impatient like I am and you wanna to get to the pretty colors, I did put a blow dryer in this to finish the, the drying uh, and it works just fine. I also have fresh water. It's always a good idea. If in doubt, get clean water. Clean water is good. Clean water is your friend, especially if you've got a white subject. Okay. Now we're gonna put some shadows on the bird himself. Shadows are just by nature a blue color. I'm gonna use this, the lighter blue, which is also in the background, and it's actually manganese blue. Um, and I'm just gonna lay some shadows on him. The underneath of him, now he's in moonlight, so he's really kind of all in shadow. So this is tricky because he's white, but he needs shadows on him. So I'm gonna shadow the underside of him some here. And down his, almost at his fins, <laughs> his feathers. And then this neck will have some shadow, top of his head. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my brush off. I've got just water on it. I'm gonna get the excess water off. And I'm just gonna soften these edges because it's a shadow and he's, he's a cylinder. He's not a flat object. So he's rounded. So we need the shadows to appear somewhat rounded. Now, I like him to look earthy, so I'm gonna get some of this raw sienna that I used for the moon reflection and just drop some of it in. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing perfectly. I'm just putting some shadows, some of that color in here and there. Maybe down his legs some. They're gonna be an orangey color, so the yellow's not gonna hurt a thing there. 
Yellow also kind of is the sunlight color. So I'm gonna let this wing have some, I say sunlight, he's in moonlight, so. Same idea though. A little bit of warm on him, just, oops, I picked up blue instead. Don't do that. Let me get my juicy puddle, there it is. Another thing I probably should have done is cleaned out my palette. A little yellow on there. Now, if I mix this blue and yellow on the palette with my brush, it becomes green. But if I let it mix on the paper, it'll stand on its own and behave itself. And it's still yellow and blue, I think. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in his colors. His beak and his legs are gonna be fairly strong. I'm gonna use this orange. You know what, I am gonna clean my palette off. My mixing area, get all that cleaned off so I can, the orange and blue color complements. If those mix together equally, you're gonna get a gray neutralized mud color. We don't want mud, even though he's in the bayou. <laughs> we don't want mud. All right, I'm gonna put some orange on his beak. And then also down his legs. And then um, the legs are actually darker. I'm gonna put some burnt sienna while it's still wet, this burnt sienna color, which is in layman's terms, brown. But those of you that know me know I don't paint with brown, so <laughs> it's burnt sienna. Put some of that in there, just to vary the color somewhat. I like that. I left a little white on there just because, you know, you work hard to save that white. Might as well leave some of it. Now, I want his beak to be really strong. So I'm gonna take this darker red, which is alizarin crimson. While this is still wet, do just the, whoops. I was gonna do just the top, that looks pretty good. I think I'll just leave that. He's also got some of this orange color around his eye. Maybe that thing coming off his eye. Just some, just a little detail color. Okay, I decided I need these legs a little darker. I'm gonna put some of the red in there too and just kind of let it run. We don't want it all the same all the way down. The beak had so much water on it, it got lighter. So guess what? We just get to paint it again. There we go. That looks good. All right, so I think the moon needs a little something on it, like shadows or the craters like you see. You know how it, y'all know the craters on the moon. I'm gonna take this mid-tone blue. I'll just use the blues that we used in the background originally. And this is an opportunity where if it's not dark enough against your bird, you could put another layer on. Let me turn them upside down. And I could come around them again and make it darker yet if I wanted to, if I want more drama. Depends on how much drama you want in your painting. You could stop right there and there was nothing wrong with that or you can go another layer and make it darker. So I've got this edge that doesn't identify anything. So what I'm gonna do is clean my brush, get the excess water off with one tap on my blotter and just kind of soften this edge and let it just kind of run. Now while I got this on my brush, I'm just gonna kinda of come across this moon here a little bit and get, let it have some, I don't know whether it's clouds or craters or moon shapes. I don't know if there's such a thing as a moon shape. And I'm gonna bring some of it, it looks odd to me that the yellow is underneath it but not on it, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of the yellow up onto the moon. Still wanna save those whites best I can. Soften this edge, make this look like I think of the Scooby-Doo mysteries where, you know, they're always in the swamp and the, the, um, there's clouds across the moon. That's what I think of. Okay, if I want the moon to pop out like I did this, I could put another layer of dark back here. Now, right now I'm just playing. He was fine like he was, but it's kind of fun to get in here and just play with some color and see what happens. And I like an, oops, I like an unfinished, kind of impressionistic style. So now it's really dark right here. So down here needs to be somewhat the same value. See how this value is so much darker than that? That's that what goes behind the barn should come out the other side. So I'm gonna 
put some put some dark in there. And I don't want to cover up all this cool. I think that looks great. So I'm gonna just use water and kind of soften that edge there. And then I like it. I want this passage to come through the painting. So I'm gonna take that dark blue, mix up my juicy puddle, and come right under in here and let, let that dark travel through this painting. Clean in my brush. Now I have just water. I'm just gonna push this around a little bit. Okay, look what happened to my moon. <laughs> Covered most of it up. So in this case, I'm gonna lift a little bit of that. I got a little carried away with my big brush. I'm gonna lift some of that. I think it's still gonna look cool. It, the, it overtook my yellow though. Like I need a little, a little yellow in there. We may just have to pretend I'm happy with that. All right, what else does he need? Um, if he needed any more detail, like um, more feathers or more black, more drawing, you can draw on these with a uh, Sharpie marker. Any permanent waterproof marker will work. I feel like he needs sh some more shadow under here because I made that darker. This needs to be darker. That's pretty dark, huh? Let's put some dark stuff in there. Okay, it is so much better to leave it slightly unfinished than it is to overpaint it. And again, that's a hard thing to do. So I'm gonna stop right here and call this done. He's ready to be glued onto a card uh, and mailed off to somebody or uh, put in a frame and set on a mantle. Thank you for watching Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and comment below if you have any questions and please post photos of your watercolors, both the fabulous successes and the exuberant fails. See you next time.